To this story now, Padco bus drivers are not backing down from their wildcat strike. They claim they haven't been paid bonuses for years now and they're demanding their money. At the moment, the employer hasn't come to the table. As it says, the Labour Court is busy with the matter. Mobile Matala is at the Padco depot in New Canada with more on the story. Good morning, Mobile. It seems a bit quiet there. Have they not congregated as yet or what is the status? Well, it is rather quiet, as you can see behind me. There's a bit less people today as compared to the time where we were here yesterday. But from what we're hearing, they're saying that more people are currently still on the way. But these people that you see here, um, Bundo, way enough to ensure that nobody goes into Padko. Um, we know that this area is very significant because this is where they actually fix their buses. So most of the people that have been protesting um, has been drivers, but now the people that are mechanics have been forced to be part of this protest as well, as we know that they just across, if you see just around that side, that's where they are now um, and have ended up being uh, standing there, just sort of waiting for a time to come back to work. But I want to bring in some of the people that are here, of course, to ask them, of course, about those numbers that we are seeing dwindling. But <laughs> for two years, almost three years, much over very sad three years. Ma. Right. Okay, should see a baby in Gamania Mazna, Kubega, Mago Gutani to Lo, Impella, a slave move, as he made up on Jacten in Nomanga Pedinia, a very Ganese to Cesada and Piscata Sasa City, a Kubega Salisi lamp. Lava Bafunu Kibela Pova Babona. Now, Pelabas, go on ever slagged if by a fool who would enjoy Abu Ilung. What a man have a better move and up. Sis a Kubega Tina Slade and Obimala Situ. Um, that's Ubabum Somi just speaking to us about what they're doing. He's saying that he thinks quite a number of people have not come due to the fact that there are those dismissal um, papers that they still need to look at. We know that the cutoff date is today because that 24 hours should be ending soon. And now he's saying though that they're not going to be signing any of those papers because he says that they want their money and they want their back pay. So until the bonus and the back pay has been paid, only then will they be signing. But he's saying that even the passengers at this point, um, they can't be thinking about them because they need this, because their children need this money. And of course, this is a difficult time, they understand. But he's saying that they're not going to turn back. But mm -hmm. now I want to bring in a passenger, Bundo, who's come in this office to actually ask for his money. Uh, so you've just gone to, to the gate to ask for your money. How much did you spend and how much do you want? Um, I, I want 844 rand for, it's a monthly take where we have to, to fill it. But ma, now, I don't get paid. I said, I don't get so we still got to be on a bus refund in Malaya. But when some problems are, my man, so we have to delay, and then so we can help to reload again. I might take every night that. It's a it's a inconvenience. I can't change the length of it. Ah, it's my job because it's yes, we need to say that in a about about travel, I have been. I sell my means or whatever because the money is a budget every. Ongu muda kada mali. So it transport money, so we have to pull together so it's load a monthly. So we are looking in next time as a basing as seven GC any transport as you see immediately already budgeted to go transport. So our man is strong as so good as you. Man, you feel good, Zagale. We feel my damn big. 
Well, that's one of the customers that has come here on Fundo to request for his money back, as you can hear. He's saying that he spent over 800 rand, and as a result, he says that he wants his money back. He says it's been difficult because this is the amount of money that they budget. But Fundo, just to show you what's happening around me, you see that there's actually police that are ensuring that they control um, the strike that is happening. We saw POP coming in as well to just check and ensure that there is no clashes. Now, I want to show you some of the drivers that we are hearing from the previous drivers, of course, that we've spoken to, saying that these people are here to work. But they now said that they will not be working. So they're blocking some of these people from entering the gate of Patco. Now, we understand some of them are mechanics. They're the ones that um, are fixing some of the buses that are on the road, but they cannot go there at the moment. And the police are, of course, speaking to them just to ensure that there is some safety measures and that there isn't any clashes. We do know that we will be speaking to Uli Ndogu Ulu, who will explain to us what this means. We do know that there's hundreds and hundreds of people that already have been inconvenienced by this strike. And of course, it's sitting on day seven, which means it's almost a, week, it's, it's a whole week without transport, as you can hear there from some of the from that customer that said he wants his money back. Mm -hmm. It will be important to hear from the spokesperson around perhaps reimbursing those commuters because they really are struggling, as he states, that you budget for your transport and beyond that you utilize your money for other things. So it would be important to hear if there's any way they can meet some of these commuters halfway in as much as it was also unplanned on their part. It's an unprotected strike, as Dindogutle Kulu has stressed. But we'll catch up with you a bit later as soon as perhaps you have had that conversation with the spokesperson that's our reporter. Mobile Mazala monitoring the Patco bus strike.